morning, good morning. Um, welcome to uh, a new episode of my Knitting and Creative Podcast. Uh, this one today is going to be pretty much just about knitting and some indigo dyeing that I did. I don't think I'm sharing anything other than fibre crafts with you today. Um, yeah, so my name on Instagram is Orchid's Heart. Um, I generally share knitting, sewing and some other creative bits and bobs. Uh, I'm in England, I'm in Birmingham and we are in the midst of a bit of a heat wave. Also, thankfully, last night was a bit cooler. But because it's now actual summer, which I feel like it's taken a while to get going, to be honest, um, it is hotter than normal though at the moment. It happened really quickly. It's quite early. It's before work starts. Um, I've not even really had my breakfast yet. And my partner's gone away. He just left. Um, so he's going to go away for a couple of days. So I thought I would record an episode before I log on for work. So um, I'm drinking my breakfast smoothie. Uh, during this so I always have a smoothie for work I if I know I'm gonna have a busy morning where I don't have much time to sit down and have breakfast I um I prep a smoothie in the fridge to blend in the morning um so I've had one the last couple of mornings so I've been going into the office so yeah I just thought I'd have another one this morning because then I can have my breakfast whilst I'm talking to you guys so yes um, I am wearing things I've made, so maybe I can share that really quickly before I, I get into the knitting. Um, I'm wearing um, a Celio, I think it's called, top, um, which I believe is Spanish for sky. It's quite similar to French for sky, so I think that's right. Made from Merchant Mills linen and um, seersucker. Uh, which is a textured kind of fabric, like it's quite bumpy. I don't know if you can see. So this is just made from leftovers from scraps. It's got like some contrast panels on the shoulders um, and I want it to look a little bit like a sunrise. So it's like a cropped boxy tee and then I'm wearing my trusty old um, tensile twirl purple aronite pants which um, I patched and, and fixed because I am working from home today. Um, even though our house is quite cool, it does get quite warm working by the computer um so i'm just wearing really really cool clothes um i've opened all the blinds to film this so that it's light in here but when i finish i'm going to close all the blinds so i can keep the room a bit cooler um and the rest of the house so anyway i'm not going to go on about the weather that'd be a very british thing to do i'm just going to crack on so i have a finished object a couple of whips indigo dyeing and then I do have some acquisitions at the end. I've been really naughty this month and last month. I did win some of it, so I didn't buy all of it. Um, but I did also purchase from a D stash. And then I did go to a um, yarn festival last weekend, but I was really reserved at the yarn festival. It was really local. It was called um, Yarningham. So it's oh, straight here. It's um, Birmingham Yarn Festival. Um, so yeah, um, I can talk about that at the end. I guess maybe the indigo dyeing is more interesting. I did a lot of indigo dyeing. So, and I'm maybe going to have some for sale, but I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, okay, so, and I need to make sure I don't get any yarn at any point in my drink because milky, yogurty, fruity yarn would be a bit gross. Hmm. Maybe I'll put it under the tripod. Could be a mistake. Right. So this one, I'm not how you sure how you say it, to be honest. Um, so I'll put the put the name up. Um, my mum really wanted a jumper like my fern and feather, which actually I should get out because it's an interesting comparison. Sorry, it's my feet squeaking on my floor. I've got some like strange old line I put down on my floor. So it is a bit squeaky. If you heard any of that and my old chest of drawers. So my mum wanted a jumper like this. So I wear this one a lot when it's cold, even in the summer in the evenings. Not at the moment though, because it is uncharacteristically 
warm until quite late at the moment which i don't really feel is normal for england like normally our summer i feel like in the past our summer was mid 20s until the sun goes down and then it's cold <laughs> um and so this was really good um so this is the fern feather it's knit in let low pay. and so i knit this on size four millimeter needles i think that's what the pattern suggests and my mum really likes it but she tried it on and it didn't really fit her very well so this is a top down circular yoke so i picked out another pattern which was kind of similar but this one's bottom up because i thought it might fit a bit differently i don't know so that might have been a waste of time buying another pattern i also fancied knitting something a bit different so i had some yarn left over from mine um but i did have to buy a couple more balls of the oatmeal just to top up so it was a bit of a gamble with dye lots but i did um alternate when i was switching from the two dye lots so i don't think you can see i don't think there really was a difference um so that's fine but the interesting thing is the stitch count for the body and this is why i think like gauge is really interesting how can I show this? The stitch count for the body is the same, but my mum's is noticeably much, much bigger and much looser. So hers is knit on five millimetre needles and this was knit on, on four. Now she is roughly the same size as me, but I, I would say that my fern and feather is quite fitted. It's also quite cropped. So it's generally, for her, it was a bit small and a bit too kind of tight. I really like it because I think it's really hard wearing and really warm and I actually found it really comfortable to knit at this gauge on that low poo. Um, I found I was worried this would look sloppy and untidy because when I was knitting it I could see that it looked much looser but because I noticed that the stitch count for the body was um, so she wanted me to knit this one a size up for her but then we decided I'd knit a different pattern so I thought okay I would do a size up from what I would knit for myself because that's kind of roughly what my mum was looking for um, but I noticed because the stitch counts were the same that I thought okay I'll knit the same stitch count size which was the second size but using the recommended needle of a size five I didn't bother swatching because I knew it would be big enough because it's the same stitch count as this but upper needle size so I thought there's not much 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 point doing a gauge swatch because it's the same yarn I know it will be big enough it'll be a bit bigger than that one but i am surprised about how much bigger so i did also knit it much much longer because she doesn't want a cropped jumper um she will probably wear this over one or two other jumpers now i am a little bit worried that it might be too big because i held up against my partner and i think it's his dimensions um no not you thinking i could give it to him but he wouldn't be caught dead in this he was like oh it's so itchy looking he doesn't really do traditional looking jumpers. He's much more of a uh, retro British 80s vibe kind of person <laughs> with a hefty dose of acrylic because that's what jumpers were then. Um, so this isn't really his cup of tea anyway, but it, like this, this is his dimensions. So that was quite interesting for me because I've always been a bit wary of knitting him a jumper because I kind of felt like it'd go on forever. And this didn't feel too much like it went on forever. So you knit, the bottom up and then the sleeves up and then you join and you do the yoke i really enjoyed doing the yoke i did get a bit bored by the rest um and then i just put in a little handmade label um in the neck so she can tell which is the front and which is the back so it is much more open the gauge is much more open than um, mine um it feels like quite not too heavy um, I think it'd be really good for my mum wearing over jumpers. She's not the kind of person that's going to be particularly hard wearing on her elbows or anything like that. Um, so I think, you know, it should be fine. I guess I'd be a bit wary about knitting myself a jumper at this gauge on the elbows because I'm always leaning on my desk or, you know. Um, but then I guess you just mend it, don't you? Um, I could do with a let lopey jumper that's bigger because it would be good to be able to wear two of them when it's cold. So I might in the autumn, because this won't be going very far away, it's only going to my mother, um, I might try it on over mine and see what I think and maybe knit myself on. So the colours are the same as my fern and feather. Um, I will put the 
colour charts below because the numbers below because I, I don't know um but my fern feather didn't have this grey colour so I think the original went from dark to light colour wise but she wanted it kind of similar to mine and didn't want it to end on a light colour and so because of the contrast situation I couldn't it just worked out as the best combo. I had a skein of this grey, almost a whole skein of this grey left from my um, Maya cardigan. Um, but this is what I have left. So I used pretty much a whole skein of the almost black. Um, this is like a black heather or something. Um, and then I have this much left of the other two. So I do wonder, combined with an orange skein I've got, maybe I can make a hat or some mittens or something. I don't know. Um, but this can go into the stash so yeah we shall see so yeah that's that so I'm really happy with that so that's my mum's birthday present for August and then so um I'm covered in like lopy fuzz now my whips so my my biggest whip my most changed whip since last time so even though it doesn't feel like that long ago I did a video, I have a feeling it has been quite a lot has happened at home and stuff. So I've been a bit stressed and stress knitting. Um, yeah. So, and I was craving, I think I said last time, I was craving knitting a shawl. And I was craving knitting something a bit different. And I had all this naturally dyed sort of candy coloured yarn which I had tried knitting up into a colour craze before um, but I didn't like it so I picked out the pattern the Vertices Unite I haven't woven in, woven in my tails yet so I did put it on some longer cords this morning to try and show you a bit better I mean it's massive, I'm not going to be able to show you completely there is a mistake, I'm sure you can see that slightly thicker blue stripe um yeah so this is a bit I have to be careful because this this last needle isn't really quite long enough yeah so this is a chevia blend with something else it's a in fact I think I might have a label here oh no it's 100% chevia um a woolly mammoth fiber co limited edition yarn um, from like COVID times. The yellow is a Nelly and well, it's mostly because I ran out, mostly a Nelly and Eve 100% British wool, which is 50% um, Exmoor Blueface, 30% BFL, 20% Wensleydale, um, and it's a four ply, um, and it felt really, it feels really squishy and really nice. But um, as you can see around here, I, I knew I realised I was going to run out of the yellow. And so I had a Woolly Mammoth Mini that was a similar colour. So I kind of striped it in. Now something that I found really interesting, the outside of the ball, because this was wound up into a mini cake already, was pretty much the same colour as this. And the further I got in, the darker it got, which suggests to me it faded on the outside. So I don't know whether over time this is going to blend more, which is kind of a shame because I do love this colour. Um, but I will say I have had a lot of fading with Woolly Mammoth Fibre Co yarn. So I don't really know how I feel about that because this is almost entirely her colours. So I really hope they don't fade too much. Um, I've really been trying not to just leave this on my window bed in the sun when I'm not working on it. Um, I mean, the hooks I hang my shawls on are in the dark corner of my room, so maybe it's okay to leave it out when I'm not wearing it. Because um, if I hide it away when I'm not wearing it, I won't reach for it. I was kind of thinking this would be a summer evening shawl, uh, but at the moment the idea of wrapping myself in wool is just horrendous. Um, but it is big, like... It's like a blanket. Um... So yeah, so this is the Vertices Unite by Stephen West. I've never knitted a pattern by Stephen West before, but I absolutely loved this. You cast on two stitches, um, and then I'm at the stage now where I've got to do an I-cord bind off um, around the whole outside, which I've never done before. 
so i realized last i was going to start doing it last night but i realized i will have to go around the hole outside which means this is probably going to like scrunch right up and i wouldn't have been able to show you what it looked like so i thought i'd wait um and maybe i'll start doing that later or maybe not maybe i'll put it off for a week because i'm nervous so i have actually i ran out of the blue as well so this sh section should be bigger um I think it ends up being like more of a straight line rather than having a bit of a sorry a bit of a <laughs> bend there um but I decided it would be better to just stop there rather than um add in a seventh color because I think it would look a bit bitty um at that point so I'm just going to I'm just going to end it there so I think that's fine I have been keeping track of uh, the weight and length of the yarn that I've been using. I've been weighing the cakes before and after I start a section, just so I can work out like the approximate um, meterage um, for the different sections, because I will probably knit another one. And the thing I found most stressful about this pattern, because I wasn't purposely buying yarn for it, I was looking through my stash, I used mostly minis and then I think I had two full skeins and a half skein um, which I have half of one of the full skeins left I'm going to use it to do some of the bind well use it to do the bind off um, but I found it really hard to kind of decide where I was going to put my colours so I did sort of start drawing it out and mapping out with like pens um, it, I didn't stick to it though it was yeah pointless um, but you know I never really knew whether I'd have enough yarn for a section you know, like, would two minis be enough for this stripe section? Da, 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 da. So um, I'm hoping next time I can make a bit of a better educated guess about how much yarn I need for a shawl. Because I have a couple of random skeins. And then maybe, like, some leftover bits from other projects. It might be quite nice to get, like, a collection of earthy colours, pull them together and do, like, an earthy one. So, um, yeah, maybe in the autumn. I do have quite a few shawl plans that might not happen for a while so yeah that's that whip so i guess i'll show it to you again when i've done the border and then mostly it's not going to look so terribly different i guess when it's blocked it will look it will look better so maybe i'll give you a quick update next time um but these in here so the jar is a bit dirty are some of my leftovers so that combined with the leftover I will definitely have some of this left over, I think. So this is also um, Willy Mammoth Fibre Co. So most of this is her natural sock. So I think I might do some scrappy socks with what's left over because I think there will be enough. If not, I do have some more of her yarn and something I purchased at the um, yarn festival, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, so I think this could make some quite nice socks because I've never done no nylon socks before. Because I'm nervous about them wearing out. I know some people have great success, but I think making some socks from leftovers from a bigger project makes me feel a bit better than expensive no nylon socks because it's leftovers, it kind of feels like a freebie, um, and these colours do work really nicely together. So, yeah. So that's exciting. Um, and then my last whip is a new one, which I started last night. It's also an acquisition. So um, I'll just talk about this yarn, but I'll save the others for the end. Um, at the, I was really umming and ahhing about whether to go to the yarn festival because I have, I had already bought or acquired quite a lot of yarn in the last like eight weeks. Um, but I knew that Zakama yarns are going to be there. And I have actually bought their smaller advent um but i really kind of wanted to go see them and see what their yarn was like it kind of seemed like a wasted opportunity i can walk to this yarn festival from my house um it was kind of expensive to get in i thought it was like 15 quid just to go so that's kind of what was putting me off because i was like well there'll be all these yarn dyers um if i buy anything i don't need to pay postage because they're there uh but i mean to be honest probably ended up being more expensive going and buying the yarn there considering I didn't buy that much, rather than just buying online, but that wasn't really the point, you know. Um, it was nice to go with a friend and to have a bit of a look around. Uh, it was quite quiet because we went early on a Sunday morning before it got hot, because that building does get hot, so we did, we did well there. Um, but I 
most, I mean, I'll talk about the Yarn Festival now and I won't talk about the Yarn Festival again later. Most of the people there were super wash, bright, colourful yarns, which weren't really my vibe. And I could kind of tell that from the Instagram um, previews, but there were a couple of people I was interested in seeing. Um, so there was one dyer, Urban Pearl or something. She had some really lovely colours. Um, they reminded me a little bit of a, a couple of dyers I've got my eyes on in America and Canada that I really want to try. But, but can't because of import fees. Um, but Sakami yarns, um, you know, their stand is beautiful. They have like dried flowers over the top and it's really nice. Um, and he, because um, I think it's um, a couple, he was there and he was really friendly and really lovely. Um, and there was a bargain basket underneath um, the display of yarns. So I did have a look and um, I found this one, which and another one which I'll show you later. So this one I didn't initially buy, I bought the other one I'll show you in a bit and I put this back in the basket because it is a superwash yarn, uh, it's not a sock yarn, it's a four ply superwash merino and so well that's not really the fibre I tend to like working with, um, I don't really need it in my life um, but it is really my colours so I, I did go back for it because there was a top pattern I really want to make called the Venice Wrap Top I'll try and remember to do the picture thing here. Um, and I probably do have yarn somewhere in my stash I could have knit this with. Um, but I think the yarns I've kind of got in mind are quite special yarns. And I guess I want to test whether I'll actually wear this pattern before knitting it in a nice yarn. So this was reduced. It was only £15. I have to admit, I don't know how much it'd be full price. Possibly 17 or 18 So, I mean, it's not that much of a discount. Um but you know it was a one-off like I guess the thing that I was thinking of there's only one skein in that colour you can only do a one skein project so um I can just about make the smallest size of this top with 400 meters so that works quite well technically I should be knitting the next size up for my bust but that's measuring my bust wearing a bra and I think I won't wear a bra with this top because part of my motivation for wanting to knit it is I quite like wrap tops that you can tie quite tightly um, because then I can get away with not wearing a bra and when it's really hot I actually find it cooler wearing my ripple bralette I knit as a top and bra in one than a bra and a top I mean to be honest I'm not wearing a bra underneath this um, when it gets warm I just stop but like something like this at work then leaning forwards it's a bit, a bit of a bad idea so I have like a wrap jumpsuit I wear a lot at work because I can tie it quite tightly um, and it's, it's okay. So I feel like this might be quite a good thing to wear at work um, if it works out well and it's not gapy um, because it'll be a bit more secure and maybe a bit more modest if it's got like a knitted texture rather than like a thin fabric because that's another thing you've got to be careful of if you're not wearing a bra. Um, so I've really only just started. I've done this much. <laughs> that is it so not very much to show um but like the next 50 rows are kind of the same they're quite easy and straightforward so i think it might be a kind of pattern that i can take out with me and do out and about so yeah i am gonna have this next to my desk today and try and do some in some work meetings so we'll see how much progress i make today if not i might take it to the park later and listen to the radio on my headphones and do a bit of knitting in the park as well yeah exciting i really like the color even if the fiber choice i'm a bit like yeah but i guess you probably don't want a woolly wool on your bare skin in summer anyway so i thought it'd be quite a good match for that okay so indigo dyeing <laughs> so i've done quite a bit of natural dyeing over the years um i think i started learning about natural dyeing actually before i learned to knit because i could crochet so I was kind of starting to dabble with natural dyeing um, around the same time as I started learning to knit. Um, I don't think I ever ended up crocheting anything in my natural dyed yarn, um, but I have some fairly dreadful early knits in naturally dyed yarn. Um, I was living away for summers teaching um, summer schools for university students and they kind of put you up and in um halls and i used to <laughs> in the big student kitchens we had uh, we weren't students we were teachers living with other teachers um 
I used to die in the kitchen there and they all thought I was mad. Um, but anyway, so I've done quite a lot of natural dyeing, but I've never done indigo dyeing. So I was always quite nervous about indigo dyeing because it sounded quite involved. Um, but I bought some natural, some indigo dye on the internet. I watched a few videos. Um, I bought a few other bits and bobs I needed and I um, had a go. So uh, possibly you are seeing me already on screen having a go at some indigo dyeing um, or I'm inserting it afterwards. Uh, but yeah, it was really good fun. I did it in my um, partner's workshop. He has a bit of a, a lab he built in his workshop because who doesn't? I don't know. Um, he So he let me use uh, his like fume head area and stuff like that. Um, I'm not sure it was overly necessary, but I was a bit worried about getting indigo all over the house. I'm glad I didn't do it in the house because his lab is now a little bit blue. And I was a bit worried about dripping stuff everywhere and just not really knowing what I was doing because it said you had to like dunk it in clear fresh water after you dyed it and then you had to let it aerate um, and leave it for 20 minutes before rinsing it out. Da, 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 da. So, um, and I knew I was going to be done quite a lot and I wanted quite a lot of space to hang up for it to dry for a few days. His workshop was also incredibly hot this time of year, so I knew things would dry quickly there. So I dyed a lot. Um, here, and I've got a skein that I'm down here, I can show you a bit closer. I had seven 100 gram skeins of Aranway um, alpaca, which I dyed. So this is one of them. So it's quite bright for me, really. But there's lots of um it is quite tonal there's lighter parts and dark parts now this is actually because this was the only um these skeins were the only ones that i didn't soak in water um before putting into the pot so where they stuck together the uh, some of the strands initially stayed white so i ended up re-skeining them soaking them in water and then dunking it a second time a couple of days later in a fresh batch so i was initially quite worried with all these white strands but actually i quite like it now it's kind of evened out um so this was white originally uh, i'm thinking i might ha hold it with a strand of something else which i'll share in a bit um to make a shawl or something so 700 meters of yarn a shawl perhaps this with um a strand of fuzz i honestly don't know whether i would wear an alpaca and mohair shawl of this color but i don't know what else to knit with it <laughs> maybe it would be nice and cozy in the winter um i'm also wondering would i get blue fuzz on everything i do i don't actually know whether i'm a mohair person or not yet and whether i like the fuzziness whether i should just knit a shawl and just straight alpaca maybe um because it doesn't i know alpaca has a lot of drape and that doesn't matter in a shawl that's a good thing um another thing i did so this was like a test sample i had a little bit of leftover onion dyed um thrifted mohair i have a giant cone of mohair i thrifted which is a bit yellowy creamy tinged and so this was that bit was naturally dyed with onion I saved a bit so that you could see the colour difference. So it then got over dyed in indigo. And so I really like this colour. I'm definitely going to dye up some mohair um, with onions and then a dunk in the indigo because I think that's really good. This was just a quick dunk. Um, I think that's really pretty. So this I thought I might use um, on some no nylon socks. Um, on the heels or something um, just to give it a bit of extra strength I thought that'd be quite good so I also think the colour does go really well with the yellow maybe there would be some potential for like an onion indigo combo um, knit in the future I don't know so I did that I then I went through my stash um, before I was doing it and I picked out some um, naturally dyed skeins that were a bit meh and so I had these two which are Marbrigo Singles Merino. So I think this one was a really yellow, like dirt yellow. Um, so that came out really pretty. And then this one, you can actually see. So this yarn felt together really easily and this skein had. And so the consequence of that was some of the original colour 
is on some of the strands and so it's a bit variegated um, with some like streaks of brown um, and, and blue so I did wonder of holding these together it might tone it down a bit I don't know maybe um, or I don't know, knit something else put it in the collection of uh, naturally dyed yarns and maybe knit a shawl in the future I don't know I also dyed so I've got like this basket down here of some of them <laughs> so then the other one you can see in here are these skeins which has got them attached I have four skeins and this is a wool cotton blend so two are slightly darker and two are slightly lighter which is odd because they all died at the same time um and so these um it's a four ply i'm gonna hold them double a darker with a lighter a darker with a lighter and i think i'm going to knit a summer cardigan possibly the um cropped three-quarter length sleeve version of the minimalist cable cardigan um there might be too much yarn here i don't know um if there's leftovers maybe i can knit a tank or something but i thought a summer cardigan would be really nice so i might that might be a knit for soon or it might be a knit that i start in the autumn for next summer i don't know i mean it would be quite a nice thing to have um and then the last few things that i dyed which might be exciting for you guys i dyed up six skeins of british wool um so this is a fingering weight um yarn and so let me check is this the same so these are the same batch so this is i've got four of these um so i've wound these that's why they're different sizes <laughs> uh, ultra handmade this is um so the um so these were dyed with tansy uh, which gives yellow and then over dyed with indigo so they have quite a lot of variegation And um, they do have, is, oh, you might not be able to see on camera, some slightly greeny spots in places. I have a skein here that hasn't been wound. And you can see there, look. It's got some like tealy greeny bits in it as well. So there will be four of those. And then I have two skeins of just indigo dyed um british wool so this is just some like lovely shades of blue and i've got two of these so i dyed way too much yarn as you can see um these colors uh i thought would be really nice to share with you guys because i know what i want to knit with the other yarns um these i'm not so sure so i have more yarn than i need so i thought i would put some of these up for sale in my ko-fi so i've made these little labels and I've written on the back what it is. So this is just indigo, British wool, four ply, approximately 100 grams. It's actually a little bit over. It might be 101, 102, 103, depending on the um, the skein. And it just says wash call. And it's got a little like, mushroom stamp on the front. So I'm going to put these on my Ko-Fi shop when I finish winding them. I have another three to wind up. Um, I apologise that they're not uniformly wound. Um but I, <laughs> I like them anyway. I'm quite proud of my, uh, of my skeins. So if you would like to buy some, um, I mean, two skeins. So there's two skeins in each batch. So that's 800 meters per batch. I do reckon if you did want to buy all four of the Tansy Indigo, so that would give you four, eight, uh, 1,600 meters. Um, they probably, even though they're two different dye lots, if you alternated, you'd probably get away fine with it. Um, they are really close, but the Just Indigo is a different colour to the Indigo Tansy, obviously. Um, but yeah, so, but if not, I don't know, maybe like a knitted tee, a tank, a shawl, pair it with a mohair, um, hat, all sorts of things. Um, yes, so Indigo does crock off on your hands. So that means um, when you're knitting with it, you might get a blue tinge, but it washes off really easily. Um, and something that I noticed or I learned whilst I was dyeing, the colour can only fix to stuff 
when there's no oxygen in the dye. So to me, that sounds like it's not going to dye your clothes or hands permanently because there's oxygen in it and it's not going to fix anymore. So I was always a bit worried about that. Like, would it stain my clothes indigo? Because I know it does crock off on your hands. Now, I don't know whether my theory is true or not, so don't trust me and not do your own research. But I mean, it's the same as new jeans, I guess. And they don't stain your clothes, do they? So you just have slightly blue knees to start with for a little while if you've ever bought blue new jeans i don't think i have so i don't really know what i'm talking about but people say this um but yeah so but i really manhandled these a lot and i washed my hands afterwards and it all came straight off so i think it should be fine but those of you who've worked with indigo yarns before you'll have a better idea but yeah so there'll be six skeins in the shop um my kofi shop is linked below and i also wanted to say whilst i'm talking about kofi I didn't set up Ko-Fi for the purpose Ko-Fi entails, but someone did send me a Ko-Fi support payment the other day. What, what is it they say, like, buy you a, a coffee or something on there? That's the premise, like, saying thank you to someone and buying a coffee. And I just wanted to say to that person, I really appreciate it. It was really lovely. I'm not going to name you because you didn't ask for that. Um, but yeah, it was really sweet and really nice. Thank you. You made my day. Um, but I set up my Ko-Fi shop primarily for selling things, so there are some stitch markers in there and some other bits and bobs, some clothes I've made that I don't, that I've never worn, um, and things like that. So yeah, these will be going on there. If I have finished winding them when this video is being edited, I will put a date on here. I'm going to aim to put them up for sale around the same time this video goes up. So yes. And you know, if you bought some stitch markers at the same time, it can it can all go in the same parcel. That's not a problem. My hair's coming down. Um, okay, so that's uh, the dyeing and the knitting. Um, now I have um, some acquisitions, if you would like to see, including a prize I won. I've realised I didn't share one of my whips, but that's fine because it hasn't changed that much since last time. Um, but it is in a prize, so i yeah so i'm going to share the acquisitions bit now which i don't normally do um but i have i've been really blessed with yarn this month and i want to share because i'm really excited about some of it so the first thing i'll share um i was participating so this is the other whip i didn't share participating in the knit nelly knitting nelly knit along um and my um contribution for the knit along was making her calico sock pattern sort of i did a different heel um uh these are that's a woolly mammoth fiber co mini skein and the rest is exmoor sock so i was really lucky and i won a prize um so part of that prize was this project bag which i thought when i saw the picture was like cream and dark green stripes but it's actually like a mint colour with dark green stripes. And I, I love this bag. It's got um, a pocket on the back. Um, it's got a loop here, which I'm not really sure what's for. Potentially stitch markers. I don't know. And then inside, it's got quite a few different compartments. It just feels really lovely. I think it's possibly made from linen. Um, I have put... Uh, so this... This tree badge came in the prize as well. And then I already had this lichen fancier badge from um, I don't know, Katie Greenbeam. So I don't normally put badges on my um, project bags. but So this the person that made this bag is called Woodsy and Wild. They're based in America. And I, just, I decided this was going to be my woodland themed uh, sock knitting bag. So I, I've put my uh, wooden mushroom stitch marker on there. And um, I just have like my sock knitting stuff in here, my sock needles, because I use tiny circulars, um, the skein of yarn I'm going to be using for the toe, my sock whip, which is nearly done, and um, some other socky bits in here. So this, this project bag was in the prize. And then um, some other bits and bobs, like some lip balm, some um, wool soap, and some things like that. And then a couple of skeins of yarn. 
two of which, well, three of well, all of them actually, are yarns I wanted to try. Um, so the first one is this Gilead, which is in a lovely, like, dark green colour. This is 100% my colour. So it's 800 grams, it's a French yarn. Um, I believe it's got really good um, eco credentials. I'm trying to find the weight of it. Well, it's 250 metres for 100 grams. So is that DK? Is that heavier than DK? I'm not sure. So I, I mean, I really like it. I don't know what I'm going to make with it. I might, I might save it because I did intend to buy some more of this yarn. So maybe I'd make a colourwork jumper. Um, however, I think the pattern I wanted to make is more of a one colour garment. So I don't know. Um, but definitely this can be used for something. It can be used for a hat, um, you know, gloves or something. I did make a dark green hat last autumn, which was too big for me. Um, you can see it just here out of Pluto Lopian mohair. But I did kind of want to make myself another Pluto Lopian mohair dark green hat. So, um, you know, maybe, maybe I'll just, I don't know, we'll see. But that's really lovely. And then two skeins of um, Biche et Bouche Le, Le Petit Lambs Wool, um, which is, can you see, really bright. So I was really hoping this would be a bit darker. This is too bright for me. So either, I have a few options. Either I, I really, so I did really want to knit some red socks, but I, I think it'd be a waste knitting socks with this because I think you'd wear through them really quickly. So I, I'm not going to entertain, entertain that idea. Um, I could try and put it in a dip of some kind of dye to make it a bit darker. Or I could knit a present for somebody. Or I could use it in some colour work. Or I could knit something Christmassy with it that isn't intended to be worn. Because I don't think it's the colour for me. <laughs> um, but it is really lovely and I would really love to try using this yarn. So um, yeah, I mean I'm open to suggestions. I do really like the colour red. It's just, it's, it's luminous. <laughs> it's looking at it on camera is a bit dazzling. Um, so yeah. But it does feel really nice, um, so I, I would like to try knitting something with it. And then uh, this um, American yarn, which I was really excited to try. It is by Ampersand Fibres, and so I think is it Young Folk Knits talks about them quite a lot. Um, and it's called the Carlson Fingering, and it's a US Corriedale 400 yards per 100 grams three ply. So is that a sport weight if it's 400 yards? I don't know if it's a fingering or a sport weight, but it does look a bit thicker than a fingering to me. And it's in the colour Oat 02, and it's from um, La Mercerie shop. Uh, so, yeah, I quite like this one. I wondered if it would make a good, um, like, summer crop. Um, however, is it if it's a Corriedale and it's three ply, could it be good for socks? I don't know, what do you think? Because I know non nylon socks are often made from Corriedale. So tell me what you think, whether that would be a waste. Sport weight socks. Doesn't look like it's a particularly tight plied yarn, so maybe that's not a good idea. Um, but again, this is a colour that I could definitely incorporate in something. It could also go in um, the collection of earthy coloured yarns for a future uh, vertices unite so that's an option as well so that that was the yarns that i i won um so very exciting i've never won a prize like that before so that was really lovely uh yeah so thank you uh knitting nelly uh knit along people thank you for hosting um and then i made a couple of yarn purchases so when i went to the yarn festival I bought that skein um, of Sakami yarn, but the, the first skein that I initially bought was actually this one. So this is a baby Surrey alpaca and silk. It's 50 grams and it's 300 metres. So it's a lace weight and it's non-superwash. And it's in the colour Aliyak. And I, I love it. So I did wonder if this would be enough to do, is it the Velvet Mirror Cowl by Andrea Maori? Um, 
when I was looking at colours earlier, I did think wouldn't that be a really nice combo? Not this one because this is a cotton wool blend, but isn't that colour combo really nice? Um, so potentially uh, a cow, but equally that could be quite good. That's quite a nice combo. So maybe maybe that. Um, mm, less keen. Um, but yeah, so a cow. Uh, or that i don't know um but i've got 300 meters there to play with and it's really soft so that was um also in the um, bargain bin it was 15 pounds um so i got that one so i'm really excited to try that and then i bought these three naturally dyed mini skeins so these are by folkestone harbour yarn so that's um a town on the coast kind of facing france and these are four ply sock mini skeins, 10 grams, naturally dyed. They are 75% wool and 25% nylon. So uh, no nylon sock people, don't hate me. <laughs> I thought these would be really good to pair with some of my naturally dyed um, Woolly Mammoth Fibre Co uh, sock yarns to make um, some socks. I could use these for the heels and toes. So they will be going in my collection of sock scraps and that's what i bought the yarn festival two skeins and then these three mini skeins so i was really reserved the the decadent purchase of the last eight weeks was um so last year i bought a skein of viola yarn from loop london and i really loved the colors I really love her colours. I think it's because of the Gentle Knitter. I'm slightly obsessed. Um, and I was starting to consider ordering some from Canada. And I was like, Ugh. but it just rocks up so quickly in price. So I've been keeping an eye on D-stashes and things like that. And Ravelry and on um, eBay and Instagram and stuff. And I struck gold. Expensive gold. <laughs> So I'm actually, I'm storing them in this jar at the moment because I don't like to keep my yarn just out and about um, and this way I can kind of see it and it can kind of inspire me. So I have a couple of projects worth of yarn in this jar. I buy jars at like car boots and stuff and kind of collect them. So I bought on a D-stash, let me get it. Use four skates by Holy Yarn. Um, now, I, I will say it probably was cheaper than buying it full price in Canada, and I only had to pay UK shipping. So it was a decadent purchase, but also kind of a good deal, justifying it to myself. I didn't intend to buy four and a half skeins of Viola Yarn, but that is what I ended up doing. Um, so Two of them are merino fingering, um, superwash merino, 100 grams, 365 meters in the color slate. So that's these two. Um, so they've got warm bits, cooler bits, flecks of teal in there. Um, and they're just really lovely. And then this is her sock yarn in the colorway ocean. So there's like rusty bits, purpley bits, um, all different kinds of bits. So this has a bit of nylon in it. And then whilst I was looking on D-stashes, I also found this little bit of leftover. Um, this is just the merino base, not the merino socks. So the same as the slate. Um, and it's just over half a skein. So I have lots of options here. <laughs> I nearly just um, asked for one of the blue and one of the grey, um, but it seemed a bit silly because you have more options for garments and things. Like two skeins of um, fingering is enough to make some garments. So I did think on my wish list is a, a Tegna, Tegna, not how you sure it say it. It's like a, a floaty tee um, with lace at the bottom. So I would have enough, I think, to do a small size in the grey and that could be very wearable so I think that's 
quite lightly what's going to happen because that is something I wanted to knit in some nice um, four ply yarn so that could be an option and then a, a pair of really nice socks potentially a shawl potentially a pair of very nice socks and then some yarn to go towards the shawl with something else I do have some leftovers from other projects in colours that go really well together. I was going to do a colour craze with um, these. I have a lot more of this that I need to frog from something with these. Um, and then I have a um, creamy coloured speckled yarn by Nervous Fibre and I was going to do a colour craze with these but maybe maybe with these this probably is too much yarn at that point um, I don't know so I have lots of options here so that's why it's all in this jar um, because I can kind of eye up the colours I think they go together really well so this is um, Life in the Long Grass this is uh, lichen and lace, and then this is um, viola. But this person who I do stash the yarn from, I was talking to her a bit about um, trying yarns and trying new things out, and I mentioned that I always wanted to try new to do. I am so lucky. Because guess what she sent me? She sent me some new to do. I don't know how much is here. So the only unspun yarn I've used before is Pluto Lopu. This is so soft, it's unreal. Like I'm sure this could be worn next to skin. So I feel like I might have joined the Nutrition Obsession Club. I don't know what I can knit with these two. Um, something colour work, a colour cat, a cow. This is going to be a pain editing later. I'm sorry, somebody called me on my phone. I didn't recognise the number. I didn't know what it was. Um, so I looked a bit confused. Um, but because of everything that's going on at the moment, I kind of have to answer phone calls just in case. So, yeah. Um, how was I? Noted an obsession. Uh, yeah, so... Or I save it, and then in the future, when I get more, I can do, like, a colourwork jumper. I'm not sure, but I'm not in a hurry to just use it. Um, because it's lovely. Um, I want to use it for something nice. I am trying really hard to get away from that psychology of saving yarn for something special and then never using it. Um, I'm also really trying to buy yarn with an idea of how I'll use it rather than acquiring it just for the sake of it. Obviously, you can't really do that when you win yarn. Um, but you know, perhaps if I don't end up using that red yarn, maybe I can do another giveaway and I can share it with someone else who maybe will. Um, you know, that's also a nice option. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to put this back in a plastic Ziploc bag um, to keep it safe because it's quite delicate. But yeah, so that's kind of what I'm up to at the moment. Um, I guess I'll be knitting on my, finishing my socks, doing the eye cord border on my shawl and um knitting my summer wrap top and scaling up the rest of this yarn to put on ko-fi soon so yeah hope everyone's well um this has actually been a really nice way to start the day so thank you talking about yarn and stuff i kind of feel like i've been talking to somebody i am not going to be talking to many people today because i'm working from home um and my palm is not here <laughs> so thank you for keeping me company for a bit and um i will talk to you soon thank you <laughs>